Hello, welcome to the Gym RPG Show. So today I'm going to look at the RX 6900 XT, which was recently announced by AMD. Now, I thought it was really interesting that in their presentation, the RX 6900 XT performance chart actually had the Rage mode, overclocking mode on, and also the SAM, which is the Smart Access Memory. So I thought that's not a really fair comparison to the RTX 3090 and also to the RX 6800 XT for which their charts for the RX 6800 XT actually had those two options turned off. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the charts today, look at the stock settings of the RX 6900 XT and then see what the real performance difference is going to be between uh, the RX 6900 XT and those other GPUs. Okay, so if you like this video, make sure to click on the like button and also to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. Okay, so first let's take a look at the RX 6900 XT specs. Now this is the full 80 compute unit die and there are no other rumors of there being a larger die of like 96 compute units or larger. So for all of those people that want to buy the top end GPU, well this is the one to get. So um, be happy to know that uh, there isn't another bigger a GPU coming down the line. Now it's interesting that it also has the same game clock and boost clock for this GPU and it also has the same infinity cache and 16 gigabytes of GDR6 memory as the 6800 XT. So effectively everything is the same on this card as it is for the RX 6800 XT. So Theoretically, 80 compute units versus 72 compute units, you'd probably expect about a 10% performance difference between the 6800 XT and the 6900 XT. Now, if you haven't done so already, make sure to check out my previous video on the 128 megabytes of Infinity Cache and also about the 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory and why AMD decided to go with this 16 gigabytes and also the 256 bit memory bus because I think they made some really interesting design decisions. So make sure to check out that video. Okay, so let's take a look at the performance chart for the RX 6900 XT. And as you can see on this chart, AMD has decided to enable the Rage Mode and the Smart Access Memory uh, for the performance numbers. So these are, I guess, um, overclocking or extra performance modes that they didn't actually do for the RX 6800 XT chart. Now Rage Mode is basically overclocking, so it's boosting the power limits of the card and I think AMD said that overall you're going to get maybe 1 or 2% performance difference at least on the titles that they have listed on this performance chart. AMD also has another new feature called Smart Access Memory or SAM and what that does is allow the CPU to access the GPU memory and that's going to allow for some performance gains. Now AMD also has a chart which shows the performance difference with Smart Access Memory and Rage Mode on and it's in this chart but it's actually for the RX 6800 XT. However, they also conveniently didn't put out a chart for RX 6900 XT, but I think we're safe to assume that the performance difference will probably be very similar for the RX 6800 XT as it is for the RX 6900 XT. So I think you can guess what I'm about to do. I'm going to remove the Rage Mode and Smart Access Memory performance difference. So we're going to subtract the performance difference off of the performance numbers here and we see Borderlands 3 go from 73 frames per second to 68, Doom Eternal goes from 150 to 147, Forza Horizon 4 goes from 169 frames per second to 147, Gears of War 5 goes from 92 to 87, Resident Evil 3 goes from 129 to 123 and Wolfenstein goes from 160 to 153. And so the red numbers there show the actual stock performance or what is likely to be the stock performance for the RX 6900 XT. And also for the red bars on this chart here for the RX 6900 XT, I've edited the bar so that it actually reflects the stock settings now. So you can compare the actual difference between the RTX 3090 and the RX 6900 XT without the Rage Mode and Smart Access memory on. So you can see it's still very comparable to the RTX 3090. 
it probably loses out on a couple of titles, but only by very slim margins. But over a range of titles, you're really within like 3 to 5%. So the other question is, how does this compare with the RX 6800 XT? Well, now both charts don't have Rage Mode and Smart Access Memory on, so we can compare the numbers and see the percentage differences. So for Borderlands 3, the RX 6900 XT is a plus 7.9%, Doom Eternal is 6.5%, Forza 4 is 6.5%, Gears 5 is 11.5%, RE3 is 5.1%, and Wolfenstein Youngblood is 7.7%. So I would say eyeballing it, it's roughly about 7-8% to performance difference. And I think that's a pretty good result overall. I think it was always going to be pretty hard to get that 10% full theoretical performance difference because there are always lots of little bottlenecks that a card has to navigate along the way. Um, so for example, they're both using the same 256-bit bus, but the compute unit is higher. So you're always going to get um, slightly less performance on that RX 6900 XT. So overall, I think it was a pretty good result in the end. There was an expectation that it could have been maybe 10% performance difference, but 8% is honestly not too bad. But I think that the RX 6900 XT still feels a little bit overpriced to me at $999 when the RX 6800 XT is $649. And obviously with the uh, RX 6800 XT, that's trying to compete with the RTX 3080. So it wanted to undercut the price of that. So maybe that's why that feels uh, that's better value. But for the RX 6900 XT, it makes more sense to maybe just pocket the difference and just get the RX 6800 XT if you don't really care about the top card anyway because over 100 frames per second I think most people will just say it doesn't really matter uh, for those really high frame rates. Okay so that's going to be it for this one. Make sure to click on the like button and also to subscribe to this channel for more gaming videos like this and I'll see you in the next one.